This is Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network, brought to you by the Iowa Soybean Association. Your daily recap of the information that affects Iowa's farmers, producers, and consumers, right here in the heart of the heartland. With reports from our award-winning broadcast team of Dustin Hoffman, Riley Smith, and Mark Magnuson. Now, from the IARN studios in Des Moines, here's Riley Smith. Good day and welcome to Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Riley Smith. Today is Wednesday, June 21st, 2023, officially the first day of summer. We're so glad you could join us for today's show. In today's episode, I talk with Iowa State climatologist Dr. Justin Glisson for a weekly chat where we talk about how the atmosphere is really influencing these dry conditions in the soil right now. We also have a check of that ag weather outlook, but first let's run down the markets. It's time now for the Ag Matters PM Closing Market Summary, your source for market analysis and settlement prices from the day's trade in Chicago, courtesy of the folks at agmarket.net. At the end of another trading day in the ag marketplace, we're here with Jacob Burks of agmarket.net for a bit of analysis today. Uh, first off, Jacob, you know, how have the grain markets been looking today? Well, if uh, if you're buying grain, you're uh, you know you're you're happy. If you're buying along the futures, you're very happy. I mean, we saw a, an explosion of a day here, mainly resulting off of six percent lower in the good to excellent category on Tuesday for the corn, five percent lower on the good to excellent category and the soybeans. And the, the the premise of that's most of it's coming from Illinois, and, and you know we're down below thirty six percent in the corn of good to excellent corn. So. You're seeing a a large producer of, of our of our major crops that uh, that are that are seeing some dryness and the drought hurting. So therefore, we've you know got 32 cents higher here at the close in the corn. Uh, we're 35 cents higher in the soybeans. Uh, we're seeing 40 cents higher in the wheat. So uh, for the grain market, it's just uh, this is one of these uh, drought driven, supply driven uh, uh, markets that uh, uh, that are really quick, really fast, really far. Well, and with those, you know, reports of the the good to excellent rating, we've seen you know pictures everywhere of the of the corn, you know, how it's looking in the eastern corn belt uh, in particular. And man, it's really rolling up and uh, taking that uh, drought on the chin right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm always really reluctant to look at pictures whenever you, whenever you're going through some of the social media or even just when your friends send them to you because they probably didn't take a picture of the best part of their field, right? But that's but it's becoming everywhere now, like. Uh, uh, even even right here, I'm in the southwest corner of Wisconsin. Uh, we're in that area. We're dry. We haven't had a good rain since uh, since Mother's Day. Uh, but really, with the cooler temperatures, the, the the crops look better. I mean, I'm not going to say that they're they're developing and there's problems out there on the horizon. Uh, there is, and you don't have to go very far down in northern Illinois to start getting into some of the the you know, lighter soils that uh, that look you know look rough. And and, and the corn's now starting to roll significantly. Uh, around here from from what I'm saying I've been I've been here all morning talking about what we do now and so it's uh, uh it's something that we're we're starting to see some of this uh the effects of the dryness now heat uh showing up that's really really affecting this corn crop and, and putting a putting a fear in the market yeah I think that good to excellent rating will be interesting to watch into the future here because you know we had a lot of excitement with that El Nino weather pattern forming and you know it hasn't made its way to the the Midwest quite yet but when it does you know, we could see those uh, cooler temperatures and, and more rain like we've been wanting to see. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, you got you start to get to these levels here and there's there's, there's things beyond the weather that start to take an effect here. Uh, if, if you look at it from a, a perspective of what's in a margin account, what's affecting the markets, uh, you've either got commercials that have that, that buy your grain and then sell corn uh, on, on the board. You got other producers that are in positions that that have. Uh, you know, margin requirements to be met. And the way we traded at the end of the day was a little bit surprising. We rallied strong into the close and, and it felt like, uh, you know, uh, take it for what you want, but it felt like there, there was a lot of times where, hey, people were just waiting until the end of the day to see if they could hold on to this position uh, and they couldn't, they had to, they had to buy it back. So I'll be curious to see what open interest did here uh, after today and today's move. But I think this is, you know, you start getting into these days where uh, there, there gets to the point where who's left to buy it. Now the funds are only uh, very, lightly long. Uh, so, so I'm not trying to predict that, that here at 630, uh, you know, we're done, this is over, whatever. But I'm saying like, there's a point to where who's willing to buy it, who's willing to take that risk up there. Because like you said, if that forecast changed, and we've been seeing it change significantly a lot. And I think that that could be something that, uh, you know, who wants to have their hands on a lot of exposure here, uh, if we do get turned around, because if we get rains, it's going to turn around fast. 
And of course, at this time of year, the big story is always in the grain markets. But what have we seen in the uh, livestock numbers today? Uh, the, 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 the grain markets have finally showed up to affect the cattle market. I mean, the, the feeder cattle uh, looking at four and a half dollars lower at one point. We were neg- we were we were limit down. Uh, that's over six and a quarter. Uh, so uh, strongly uh, affected this uh, this cattle market here today uh, because of the price of the grains. Now, live cattle stayed pretty strong, uh, you know. Fundamentally, you've seen box beef come down here this week. Uh, I think we're six dollars off the highs in box beef. Uh, so you've seen some of some of that, uh, uh, you know, eventually just run out of gas, if you will. Uh, but we're still trading that around three three thirty, you know, three thirty six. I think is where we were at today. So cash is. Uh, I think feedlot guys were passing up one eighty two. It sounded like yesterday. Uh, you're probably trading one eighty four, one eighty five. I mean, off the highs, but that's okay. Uh, so the, the future is there to, uh, up 12 cents in June, you know, uh, down in the back months. Uh, but these feeder cattle, though, these, these feedlot guys have to, to figure out what they're going to be able to afford, uh, you know, to, to keep margins where they need to be if they're feeding. They're not worried about $6 corn. They're worried about $8 corn. And, and so I think that's starting to come into play on in what they're willing to, uh, willing to buy these feeders for. And with those uh, lean hogs and pork prices in general, they've been on a bit of a rally recently, right? But yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, nice. We should at least, you know, thanks for bringing that up. We we dogged the, the the hogs for so long now, and we've had that V-shaped bottom here at the end of May, and, and you you start to see you know some some consistent gains uh, in, in that pork market. So uh, yeah, and it's it was led on the cash side too. That was led on the products and, and cattle and or excuse me, the hogs that followed it up. But yeah, we had another. Uh, I consider it a decent day when they don't fall apart uh, in days like this. Uh, we're down a buck in, in, the, in the July contract, but only down 40, 50 cents uh, across the rest of the board. So uh, I would say that's a relatively decent day, uh, being that uh, we had so much pressure from the grains. All right, Jacob, lots of great information today. Uh, for those of our listeners and our viewers who would like to get in touch and learn more from the folks at agmarket.net, how can they do that? I would just encourage you to go to agmarket.net, take us a look there at our 30-day free trial. Uh, you can find us there on the About Us section of our website. and look at uh, like each individual broker there to give us uh, this a call or give us an email. We appreciate it. Great talking with you today as always, Jacob, and we look forward to hearing from you again soon. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. That again was Jacob Burks of agmarket.net. We'll go ahead and take a look at how those numbers close. That's courtesy of the folks at Bar Chart. July corn is up 27 and a quarter at 671 even. December new crop up 31 and a quarter at 628 and three quarters. July soybeans up 37 and a half at 15, 14 and three quarters. November new crop up 34 and a quarter at 13.77 even. July soybean meal up 26.40 at 4.39.20. Soybean oil down four dollars at 55.63. Chicago wheat up 38 and three quarters at 7.34 and a half. Minneapolis spring wheat up 29 and three quarters at 8.78 and three quarters. Kansas City hard red wheat up 37 and three quarters at 8.73 and three quarters. July oats up three quarters of a cent at 3.97 and three quarters. On the Merck, August live cattle up a nickel at 169.75. August feeders down 4.42 at 227.72. July lean hogs down 110 at 94.75. August pork cutout up two cents at 152. And July class three milk up 49 at 15.86. And that's been a check of the markets here on Ag Matters PM. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break to hear from our sponsor, the Iowa Soybean Association and the Soy Checkoff. When we come back, I talk with Iowa State climatologist Dr. Justin Glisson. This is Ag Matters PM. Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. Welcome back to Ag Matters PM from the Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network. I'm Riley Smith. Well, we know that we've been in drought conditions for quite a while now, and of course, a lot of that is due to the fact that we're not getting as much rain as we really need to see. But as I talked with Iowa State climatologist Dr. Justin Glisson, he brought up the atmosphere and how the dryness in the atmosphere is actually sucking that moisture from the soil. And even if we do get those rains, it's not sticking around for very long. Well, we are here again this week with Iowa State climatologist Dr. Justin Glisson for a check of the drought conditions and other weather happenings here in Iowa. Now, first off, Justin, how's that drought monitor looking for the state? Have we seen any changes recently? Yes. Hi, Riley. We have seen changes. Unfortunately, we've seen intensification and expansion of drought across the state with that D1 category 
uh, moderate drought covering 53% of the state. Uh, so overall, D1 to D3 conditions, 68% of the state. And this is tied in with the drier pattern that we've been in, also those lower dew points producing the atmospheric demand and depleting subsoil moisture profiles. So we take all this together, lower stream flows and intensification of these uh, drought conditions across the state. And we're at that time of year. Are you hearing reports from farmers that that drought is starting to really get to the crops? Absolutely. And we've had these reports for the last few weeks, especially in western Iowa. But the drier part of the state has been in the eastern sections of the state, especially northeastern Iowa. Precipitation deficits last week anywhere from one to two inches below average with some stations not getting any rainfall. Luckily, we did have a, a widespread event uh, Saturday and Sunday. <clears throat> but overall, we're hearing from farmers that uh, the corn uh, that's in the basically the V8 to V12 stage rolling in the morning. So pineapple corn in the morning, uh, soybeans uh, will also seeing some moisture stress. Uh, and when you when you hear those reports early in the morning and, and our field agronomists send me uh, text messages with pictures almost every day when they're out doing their field scouting, uh, it does really show that uh, drought conditions are taking hold out there. Right. And, you know, it can be a little confusing because, you know, over this past weekend, we got quite a bit of rain, especially in this Des Moines metro area. I mean, it just kind of suddenly I remember you know, I was looking in the evening and it was clear skies and then all of a sudden there's rain clouds and we got a, a ton of rain dumped. But like you said, is it a combination of, yeah, we're getting those rains and they are isolated, but those atmospheric conditions are really just kind of sucking the moisture out of the ground? Right. So we had great conditions for these thunderstorms we saw Saturday night into Sunday. Um, good totals, one to two inch totals. Story City had a 2.6 inch total, which was the highest for the week. So definitely central Iowa did get the beneficial rainfall. We did see widespread rainfall, though totals were a lot less than those two inches. Uh, but if you got rain enough to knock the dust down and get some moisture in the profiles, uh, but overall, again, the large scale atmosphere, again, is in this persistent and stagnant behavior with these omega blocks that we're currently in. And an omega block is an upside down horseshoe, and it's a high pressure system that's very stable, and it just sits over the Midwest. And this week, we'll see warmer temperatures along with that drier pattern with chances of rain uh, uh, next weekend, but overall still stuck in this drier pattern. Right, and we know that that uh, El Nino is you know making its way uh, into our part of the state and just kind of getting uh, into the country a bit. Are we seeing perhaps on other parts of the of the country where they're seeing those El Nino conditions uh, coming in finally? Um, it's a, that's a good question. We have seen a, a more active storm track over the southern states, in lots of severe weather. And that's where the storm track is in the jet stream. Jet streams further south, we get stuck in the stagnant flow. Um, so yes, the atmosphere is has responded to the ocean and we're currently in El Nino advisory. Uh, it does take several weeks for the atmosphere to fully transition into what we would expect El Nino to behave as. But again, there's a low correlation with uh, summertime weather patterns versus what we would see in fall and winter. Uh, but again, as we've mentioned in previous chats, the El Nino pattern is slightly cooler and less dry than the La Nina that we've been in over the last three years. So again, once we break this stagnant weather pattern that we've been in, uh, there is hope for a larger scale pattern shift. Uh, and we're seeing uh, some fingerprints of that in the longer term modeling getting into uh, early July. Uh, first week of July, our current outlooks, the 6 to 10 and 8 to 14 day outlooks, do show that elevated probability of warmer temperatures, uh, but also near normal to slightly elevated wetter conditions, which uh, again, given how dry we've been, will be extremely beneficial to the farmers that really need it. And like we've mentioned recently, those crops are getting to the you know point, especially you know, we're approaching pollination. We need that rain to uh, come in pretty soon. Absolutely. The, 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 the crop is currently living off of the recent rainfalls and then that soil moisture that's deeper down. One silver lining point there is with these drier conditions, uh, corn roots are being forced to deeper to access where the soil moisture is. So if we do, you know, see a wet stretch and then move into a drier period, especially uh, tasseling pollination and, and as we move into grain fill, uh, it will access that deeper soil moisture reserves. But definitely 
timely rainfalls are what we need and a pattern shift is what we need. And we are seeing that in the outlooks, at least as we get through the end of the month. All right, Justin, anything else uh, going on climatologically right now that our viewers and listeners should know about? And then, of course, how can they get in touch to give them or give you some of those uh, field reports? Yeah, definitely. Given the drought conditions across the state, across the Corn Belt, we are, we're looking for those on the ground observations from our farmers and producers. And those help us produce a better recommendation to the U.S. Drought Monitor each week. So my email is justin.glisson at iowaagriculture.gov. My direct office line is 515-281-8981 and Google Iowa Climatology Bureau. It has all my contact information and also recent weather reports, uh, climatological reports, all kinds of fun data to look at. Um, so you can reach me through there as well. Great talking with you today, Justin, and uh, we look forward to chatting with you again next week. Yep, always nice to be with you, Riley. That again was Iowa State Climatologist, Dr. Justin Glisson. As for right now, let's go ahead and take a look at that ag weather outlook. Well, we need moisture in the forecast, and unfortunately, that's not what we're seeing. And in fact, it's just a pretty boring forecast. It's just warm, mostly sunny, and pretty dry. So let's see what the National Weather Service has in store for the next 24 hours. As you can see from the National Weather Service, like I said, it's a pretty boring forecast. Today, we have mostly sunny skies across the state and warm temps for the first official day of summer. Those highs ranging from the upper 80s to low 90s. Tonight, it'll be partly cloudy to mostly clear. Lows overnight ranging from the low to mid 60s. And tomorrow we have mostly sunny skies continuing with just as warm temperatures. Those highs ranging from the mid 80s to low 90s once again. And taking a look at the affiliate weather map for tomorrow, Cherokee will be mostly sunny with a high of 86. Shenandoah mostly sunny in 89. Des Moines sunny in 90. Waterloo sunny in 91. Albia sunny in 90. And Clinton will see sunny skies with a high around 89. For more detailed forecasts in your part of the state, make sure to check in with your local Iowa Agribusiness Radio Network affiliate. That's been a check of the Ag Weather Outlook, and that also brings us to the end of this episode of Ag Matters PM. You can find all of our content on our website at iowaagnet.com. You can also follow us on social media at Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and LinkedIn. And you can find all of our video content as well as previous episodes of AMPM on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to see when those videos go live. Don't forget as well our free twice-daily market podcast on Apple, Amazon, Google, Spotify, and Podbean. From the IARN studios in Des Moines, I'm Riley Smith. On behalf of Mark Magnuson and Dustin Huffman, we thank you for watching. This has been Ag Matters PM.